Hey there, Horse Center fans. Matt and I are back with another exciting edition of the show. Matt, it's finally here. The Breeders' Cup is upon us. Let's talk Breeders' Cup. Breeders' Cup turf. Let's talk specifically, Brian. All seven of the turf races, we will give you our top picks and some wagers. Suggested wagers, top picks, all the turf races, seven of them, as Matt say. I love that idea, Matt. Let's do it. Watch it all right here now on Horse Center. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Here we are. It's uh, Breeders' Cup week, finally, and we're going to do our two shows. I don't think we've done them like this before, Brian. Um, we're going to do the seven turf races today, and then on Wednesday, we're going to do the seven dirt races, give you our top picks and some suggested wagers. Yeah, this show is all about the grass, as Matt alluded to, Matt, and I don't know about you, Kentucky Derby has that certain appeal and the triple crown is great but for me breeders cup when we get the past performances and then the draw for all these great races it, it it's more fun than any time in horse racing it's been a long year so i can't wait to dive into this breeders cup and and as you say let's let's go to the turf you ready let's go okay we'll start with the big one it's uh four million dollars breeders cup turf a mile and a half on the grass as all these races will be at keeneland november 7 matt and uh as i as i went through these past performances you know i i'm an american i, I want to like the americans but i had a hard time thinking that the americans are better than the europeans especially magical for me magical is the class of the race yeah, I agree with that, Brian. And, and you know, uh, the Europeans on the grass always come over tough. And and the Breeders' Cup turf is always a big target. And and let's face it, Brian, it, it, it is no surprise to say that all year long, uh, the older male turf division um, in America has not been at its strongest with the bricks and mortar retiring and 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 other horses. It just hasn't been uh, the way it, you know, the quality that it's had the past few years. So couple that with some pretty darn good Europeans coming over, like Magical, with, uh, you know, with her amazing record, uh, racing almost exclusively against the boys, having won uh, almost five million in her career. She's got three Grade One wins in the biggest races uh, in Great Britain. So. She's formidable. And remember the last time we saw her in the Breeders' Cup, Brian, she just fell less than a length behind the great Enable. That's right, Matt. Uh, she she ran a bang-up race, of course, two years ago. She battled Enable before finally succumbing to that great mare in the Breeders' Cup turf two years ago. Now she's back in America, and I think she's only a better horse. Uh, she was three back then. Now she's five. Consistent. Like you say, keeping the best company. She doesn't need her her course. She doesn't need conditions. It looks like it's going to be firm by Saturday here at Keeneland, but uh, she's the one to beat by any measure. Having said that, I think there are some really other good candidates uh, coming from Europe. Uh, another female that I like quite a bit uh, and would be my second choice, I think, right now is, is Tarnawa. Tarnawa has really uh, developed into a top turf mare. Yeah, I agree with that, Brian. I went back and forth a good bit uh, in uh, making my top ch top choice of magical with uh, with Tarnawa in there. Um, like you said, uh, she's really in top form. She's got three wins in a row, and two of them are Grade Ones. Um, this is her. This will be her first time against the boys, so so that's a little bit different uh, for her. And I guess the thing that pushed me to magical was that her you know her legendary trainer dermot weld um quite frankly has a terrible record in the breeders cup brian he's 0 for 16 over the years and the best finish he has he's got one third place in there um probably meaningless but uh, i don't know 
splitting hairs. Uh, I went with magical on top and uh, uh, Tarnawa as, as, as a close second choice. Okay. Well, I, I guess we have a top two that are the same in this race. I, 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 ha I can't go with anybody but magical. She's five to two on the morning line, breaking out of the two hole. Tarnawa, though, is six to one on the morning line. So she's actually listed as the fifth choice. I don't know if she'll go off that high, but that's where they have her. Uh, the second choice on the morning line is another big European threat. I think the three-year-old mogul uh, looks to be getting good, too. And I, I certainly think he's one to watch. Of the Americans, I was rather surprised that Arklo and Channelmaker were 5-1 to one on the morning line. Kof, third choices. And United was way down at 8-1. to one. Uh, I guess, Matt, that would make him about the sixth choice. And I think he's been America's best male turf horse this year. Uh, maybe the competition in California isn't that strong, but United has run a, a lot of good races, including last year in the Breeders' Cup, where he gave bricks and mortar everything he wanted. Yeah, and, and you say he may be the best uh, turf horse. I think that certainly part of that is that, you know, his he spread a good campaign out through uh, throughout the year. Um, he's raced in, in a whole bunch of grade twos, finishing first or second in there. Um, and uh, winning several of them, uh, has good tactical speed. So, yeah, uh, eight to one seems like good odds. Eight to one seemed to be a favorite number for the morning line maker for the Breeders' Cup. It shows up an awful lot. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot of wide open races here. And, and I'm, I, I think both Matt and I are feeling that the Breeders' Cup turf isn't necessarily a wide open race, but United seems uh, oddly place there at eight to one is the sixth choice. I think he's the best of the Americans. Uh, I think Arklo, who should be much higher than his five to one morning line, is is a horse who could very well rally up for a place third or fourth or something. But I think United is America's best hope. Having said that, uh, we're both on the Europeans in here, folks. Magical is our top pick, both of us. And it, it sounds like Tarnawa, uh, six to one, uh, is our uh, second choice in here. Uh, Matt doesn't have any suggested wagers in this race, so I'll get right to mine. I'm just going to do a uh, $5 trifecta because I, I think the top horses do stand out a bit here. So I'm going to go with the Euros. I'm going to go with three Euros on top in this $5 trifecta part wheel. That's Magical, Tarnawa, and the three-year-old Mogul. I'm going to put the same three for second, hoping that these Europeans will run one-two in the Breeders' Cup turf. And then I'm going to use the Americans on the bottom I don't think all three euros will run uh, one, two, three. So I'm going to use United and Arclo. Uh, that's a $60 wager total, $5 trifecta wheel, part wheel with uh, the Europeans running one, two in the Breeders' Cup turf. All right, Matt, speaking of wide open races, how about we jump to the Breeders' Cup mile? We were uh, the Breeders' Cup turf. We were uh, uh, same, same top choice, same second choice. The Breeders' Cup mile is wide open. I'm positive we won't have the same top choice in the Breeders' Cup mile. Yeah, wide open for sure, Brian. Uh, uh, you could go through those PPs up and down and up and down, which which I did, uh, which I did several times. And and there are so many horses that have run good races, are in good form right now, have a legitimate shot to to win the race um i was looking for something to separate horses and and i ended up uh using a victory on the home track on that keeneland grass course which uh you know is a little bit different it's got a sandy base so um i ended up uh picking the number 11 ivar as my top choice lightly raced horse uh came over from argentina has a few races here in America, but his last race uh, in the Shadwell Mile, coming from off the pace, was very impressive. Ivar's my top choice. I was looking for to get a little bit of a price. I don't know. I was a little surprised by the four to one on the morning line. Yeah, I was too. I, I did not see Ivar as the morning line favorite. He is. Uh, I, I don't know if he'll go off the favorite, but on the other hand. You know they're they're pegging this favorite at four to one, so you kind of get an idea that no matter who you pick, will have odds. You're on Ivar. 
I, sir, am also on Ivar. <laughs> I, I really think he's uh, a horse that is uh, on his way up. Um, he, he looked like a real star down in Argentina, and Argentina has some good horses uh, coming up to America over the years, and Ivar looks like another one. Uh, he's improved each and every race in America. You could just see him getting better by the race. Last race at Keeneland, uh, much like uh, uh, Tappan a few years ago when she uh, won impressively at Keeneland and went on to win the Breeders' Cup mile. I see Ivar being able to do the same thing. He made an explosive move in the stretch and was definitely the best in that Shadwell mile. Horse he beat that day, uh, he beat a lot of horses that day, but the horse that rallied for second, Raging Bulls, a threat in here. But uh, seeing that shot well mile and, and, and only thinking there's more improvement. And as you said, that win over the turf course, he's my top pick, too. I'm hoping for more like six, seven to one. But we'll see. Uh, six to one on the morning line, though, is, is uh, Kimiko. And Kimiko is a son of Kittens Joy, Matt, who's, uh, I think, of all the Europeans, might be the one that makes the most sense to me. Yeah, he's got a nice win at Newmarket uh, in a grade two uh, in his most recent start. And this is certainly a race where uh, the Americans, uh, you know, fit in um, much, much more comparably to the Europeans than uh, in the Breeders' Cup turf. Yeah, and Kamiko, if you look at his record, is a uh, classic winner, having won the uh, Guineas over in England earlier this year. It certainly looks like... Uh, a mile is his best distance, and uh, uh, they stretched him out. But back to a mile, he found his winning ways last time, as Matt said. So I think he's the big threat from Europe. But there's just so many others from Europe that uh, that could pop up in this race. Too many to mention. Matt, who else do you like? Who else are you looking at in this race? This wide open race. Well, you know, I, I certainly think we have to mention Uni in here, the the six year old mare uh, who won the race uh, last year against the boys and had a very, very impressive win on the Keeneland turf course in the first lady going to come running late. Uh, um, I think uh, you, you can't ignore Uni and, and I'm going to, you know, be using her, uh, using her in my suggested wager coming up. Um, March the arch uh, seems to be cut rounding into form for uh, Mark, Ca Mark Cassie with a, couple of really nice performances up at Woodbine and finally getting a little getting some odds uh he's 15 to 1 on the morning line I don't know maybe that seems a little high to me yeah I, I really don't think so uh yeah he, he ran well his last couple at Woodbine but he's a horse who's never been able to break through at the very highest level although he looks like in really good form he's a horse I've liked uh over the last couple of years so uh I think you'll get some odds on March to the Arch. There's a lot of good American-based ralliers in this race. March to the Arch. I mentioned Raging Bull. You mentioned Uni, the defending champion, uh, coming off a nice win. She obviously likes Keeneland. I'll throw in Digital Age, who uh, they stretched out last year, and it, it kind of, I think, it threw him off his game. But he's looked really good in his return. I like his race at Churchill, which is nine furlongs. But he's another horse who's going to have to rally, too. So a lot of uh, Europeans that may pop up. I think Kamiko might be uh, might be the best of them. A lot of uh, Americans might come running, but Ivar is the one I like best. Matt, you have a suggested wager in this race, don't you? I do, yes. Uh, I'm going to uh, suggest a $5 exact key box. An exact key box, folks, is uh, you take a horse that's going to be uh, like a single, the key to the wager, and because it's a box in the exacta, that horse is going to get used in first and second position with a few others in here. So for me, it's going to be a $5 exact key box. I'm going to use Ivar with Kamiko, March to the Arch, and Uni. So if Ivar finishes first or second, and any one of those three finishes first or second, then I'm a winner. It's a wager that I've been having a, a good bit of success with. Uh, wagering at uh, Belmont Park. I like to use it with a horse that's got some decent odds as the key, and then with some horses that might have some odds just to get the other spot in the exacta, and you can get some good payoffs there. So $5, that's six different combinations, 30 bucks. 
Yeah, I like that bet, Matt, especially since we are both on Ivar here in the Breeders' Cup mile. And again, folks, 4-1 to one on the morning line, the favorite. I'm not convinced he will be the favorite. In fact, I don't think he will be. So we're definitely both hoping for higher than 4-1. to one. I kept it a little bit more simple. I like Matt's bet, but I kind of like my bet, too. Basically, I am I'm, I'm going to newer horses. I'm, I'm, I feel like some of these horses are the same old horses. They've had a lot of success, but I'm going with the newer ones. I'm going with Ivar, the South American import, who won big last time. I'm going with Cameco, who I, I think is the real deal, the son of Kitten's Joy coming from uh, England. And I'm going with Digital Age. I think he's gotten this good. So mine is just a $5 box with those three, Ivar, Cameco, Digital Age, That'll cost you 30 bucks, and Matt, we're going to move right up to the Breeders and Cup, Breeders Cup Philly and Mare Turf. This is also Saturday. This one is a mile three sixteenths, and our discussion really should start with Rushing Fall, who's had a wonderful career, and she's had a wonderful career just at Keeneland. Yeah, and that's good enough reason to to like the horse, uh, um, and and she is in fantastic form right now winning her last three races in a row that include two that include two grade ones they include the jenny wiley at keeneland and you mentioned her affinity for the track at keeneland and the diana at saratoga she's five to one so excuse me five to two on the morning line as the favorite and she's going to be my top pick brian yeah well, that's three for three, Matt, because I also have Rushing Falls, my top pick. Having said that, I do think she's a little bit vulnerable. You know, the mile three sixteenths distance, I don't think is a problem for her. Uh, but over the years, if she's shown any vulnerability, maybe it's going a little bit farther. Now she has to go farther against the best turf mares around uh, and, and some good Europeans, too. But that Keeneland record, as consistent as she is, you know she's going to run. She'll be tough to beat. She'll take some beating, as they say. Uh, I'm not crazy for this race as a betting race. Me and Mary's been absolutely terrific in her uh, form all year long. Uh, and again, several interesting Europeans come over. The three-year-old Cayenne Pepper has some really good races over there. Uh, we can't forget about uh, the horse who won this race two years ago. Sister Charlie uh, might be ready to finally throw in her best race of the year in only her third race uh, of 2020. And then finally, I got a long shot because I was uh, happily uh, a little bit surprised to see the seven horse, Tara Bellum, uh, at 20 to 1 on the morning line. I think Tara Bellum is a horse that I would, I'll probably put some money on Tara Bellum if she's anywhere near 20 to 1 because she's run some good races over in Europe. Uh, still, I, I, can't, I can't discount Rushing Fall. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Brian, but uh, it's a really contentious field. Yeah, and, and the Americans, you know, besides her and maybe me and Mary, uh, there's a bunch of good Americans. I just don't know if they're as good as Rushing Fall or uh, a European, whichever European runs their top race over here. But again, my long shot will be Tara Ballum. All right, Matt, we're going to go quickly. We didn't have any suggested wagers on the Philly and Mare turf, although I might throw a few dollars on that long shot. Uh, also on Saturday is the Breeders' Cup turf sprint and i think you have a bet in this race matt so i'll let you start another race matt that i see as very very wide open yeah without question brian another wide open race uh, so many horses uh uh to consider and and when we get to these turf sprints you know i i really really uh it, uh, it give the nod to the american horses over the Europeans, uh, our, our our American turf horses are just are just so fast. And the other factor that I find when I handicap is that a lot of those European turf sprints are on a straightaway, Brian. So they're not, you know, they don't have the experience going five and a half around a tight inner turf course like our horses do. I know it's not a big thing, but 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 it's a little bit little difference uh, to me when you're going that fast. That gives an edge, uh, an edge to the Americans. And once again, I was kind of looking for 
hoping to find a horse with a little bit more of a price. And I ended up on Leinster or Leinster. I'm not sure which it is, Brian, um, who has two grade two wins in a row. One of them uh, came at Keeneland after a four month layoff for trainer Rusty Arnold, who is a favorite of mine. Yeah, Rusty Arnold wins his fair share of races at Keeneland, especially on the turf over the years. That's been true for a long time. Not I'm on Winster, too. We're four for four on Saturday. Uh, I'm not sure about the odds. You know, it's wide open. So, again, no one's going to be a heavy favorite in here. But I I feel more confident that Ivar will be higher than his four to one morning line. I'm not so sure about Linster, but I like Linster a lot. He was getting really good last year, and I think he's only gotten better this year. Got a win over the track, loves the distance. Uh, wide open heat, but he would be my top pick. And and, and the favorite, um, I, she could be the favorite, but the favorite surprised me just a little bit. Uh, got Stormy breaking out of the 12 hole. She was second last year in the Breeders' Cup Mile. I've been a fan, if you watch Horse Center, I've been a fan of Got Stormy for a long time. Seven to two on the morning line, which makes her the morning line favorite. I just don't think she's as good as she was last year. And I guess she could win, but this time I'm really not on Got Stormy. So if she's the morning line favorite, that, that's probably a good thing for my betting. Yeah, I don't know if that's a little bit of a sentimental morning line favorite, you know, uh, figuring that a lot of fans got stormy, big got stormy fans, Mark Cassie fans. But, uh, hey, um, kind of been reborn, um, uh, coming back as a turf sprinter and, and putting together two really nice grade three victories since uh, turf sprinting. One of them uh, was at Keeneland. So, I mean, you know. Her last couple races are are about as good as anybody else in the field, so I, I can see um, I can see why you know she's got low odds in the in the morning line, but I kind of agree with your feeling about God Stormy. Yeah, I, I don't think she's faced talented males like this sprinting uh, talented males like Linster and. Imprimis, uh, I thought I think Imprimis might be the favorite. He he's been a super talent on the turf sprinting uh, realm now for a few years, and uh, he looks to be in good form too. I could see him easily being the favorite in here, and he's he's a dangerous horse. I'm going to give you. Feel free to jump in here, Matt, but I'm going to give you one coming from the clouds and one coming from the front that I think are both dangerous, both twelve to one on the morning line. Of the females, I actually like Alexandra better than got stormy and she's 12 to one on the morning line but she's going to be way out of it early and she makes a big big patented late run i think she can do that again there's there's plenty of speed in here uh i don't know if she'll get there but i think she will come flying and then on the front end of things i I think you do have to watch out for big runner breaking from the rail big runner has run some big races out in southern california uh, I, I think that could translate well if he gets a firm turf and he gets the lead in this race. So two horses, opposite ends of the early pace, I think both have a shot in here as well. Yeah, I, I like Alexandra too. You mentioned the Philly, uh, her, her last race. She had a really, really big win against the boys in the Jiper at uh at belmont park and like you said she uh she came from the clouds in there that was six furlongs this is five and a half furlongs and you might be saying oh matt what's the big deal you know half a furlong in there but you know in in these races that are run so fast there isn't room for error uh uh, at all or or you're you're gonna lose ground uh, and lose all chance that being said, Alexandra has a win, had a win at Keeneland last year. So we know that she likes the track and I'm going to be using her um, in my suggested wager. Again, I'm going to do another one of those $5 exacta boxes. My key horse obviously is going to be Leanster, uh, my top choice. And I'm going to use Leanster with Got Stormy, Imprimis, and Alexandra. 
Yeah, that sounds good to me, Matt. Uh, I like all three of those underneath. Got Stormy, I like the least of the three underneath, but Leinster's my top pick too. So uh, much like the Breeders' Cup Mile, I think you have an interesting exacta key box there, horse. And uh, yeah, if you get the exacta folks, don't worry about the the favorite uh, or, or the four to one shot because all these exactas should be nice yeah. in this kind of race. Mm-hmm. All right, Matt, that's Saturday turf. Let's jump to Friday turf. We're going to jump back to Friday because there's three more turf races in this Breeders' Cup. We'll start with the Breeders' Cup juvenile turf, Matt. And we got to start picking some different top picks in here, Matt. Who is your number one in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf? Again, it was one of those races. Again, we've got a we've got a really big field again, you know. And in most of these races, we're talking about big fields. And, and like you said before, Brian, you know, don't worry so much about uh, about about the win odds when you've got a big field like that, and you're playing exactors or trifectas you're going to probably get a pretty good payoff. So in the, in the juvenile turf, uh, it was one of these races where I was going back and forth and back and forth. It was a decision for me between an American and a European. And I decided that I would go with the American. I would go with the horse that has the victory at Keeneland. And that's, that is Mutasebek. Um, who is listed as the favorite, but please note it's a five to one morning line favorite. So talk about a wide open race. Uh, um, Mutesa Beck is two for three in his career. First two were on dirt. And in one of those races, he ran third behind Jackie's warrior, uh, who I think is the biggest favorite on the entire card for the Breeders' Cup. So this Mutesa Beck is a runner dirt, but he seems to be e- way, way better on the grass with that last to first run um, at Keeneland. I put Mutasa back on top. I was considering Battleground, the European, but um, the fact that uh, he hasn't run since July. I mean, he had a big win over in Europe at Goodwood, but it's been since July. I think he's a heck of a good horse, though, Brian. Yeah, I I, I like Battleground, uh, too, Matt. He's the uh, son of Found, and, of course, Found won the Breeders' Cup turf, where she beat males five years ago right here at Keeneland. So Battleground, I think, is a big threat, too. Those are my top two as well, and uh, maybe the two favorites. But like you said, Morning Line favorite at 5-1 to one is Mutasebek, and Battleground is 6-1. to one. So I like those odds. So I'm I'm sticking with those two. We're uh, we're on the we're on the same wavelength here because I do have Mutasebek as my top pick as well over Battleground. I think Gretzky the Great is interesting. I think uh, a new mandate coming from Europe is interesting. I think a Becco twenty to one on the morning line coming from California is interesting. So there are some interesting horses in here, but I really do like the top two best. That's Mutasebek and Battleground one for Todd Fletcher one coming over. From Europe, Matt, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start uh, uh, some wagers in here, Matt. I'm gonna go. Uh, this is a two day special daily double where I'm gonna go juvenile turf to the turf. I've already talked about the turf, and I told you who I like in here. So my uh, bets will be a ten dollar daily double Mutasebek and Battleground with Magical. That'll cost you twenty bucks, and then a five dollar daily double part wheel where I'm using Mutasebek. Battleground again, this time with Mogul and Tarnawa. So that that's uh, four combinations that will also cost you twenty bucks. That's interesting, Brian. Uh, when I was thinking about wagers to send in, um, I had considered uh, uh, doing that two day daily double with the juvenile turf uh, and uh, the Breeders' Cup turf. Also, hey, and full disclosure. Uh, to Horse Center fans. Brian and I do not and never have discussed our picks in advance of the show. We don't get on the phone. We don't get up. We don't text back and forth. Who do you like? Who do you like? Who do you like before? We really don't know who we're picking until just before the show. So full disclosure, uh, just because we had the same picks at, at this point, um, it's just an amazing coincidence. I don't think it. I don't think 
anything like this has ever happened before, Brian. No, it certainly hasn't, Matt. And I, I'm worried now that we're going to go seven for seven. Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies okay. Turf is next. And uh, there's three horses, uh, four to one or less. We have Aunt Pearl for Brad Cox, who's won her first two in Kentucky, like a very good thing, the daughter of Lopa de Vega. We have that speedy Wesley Ward filly who's won in America and Europe, two countries in Europe, Campanelle. And then we got uh, Christophe Clamont, uh, who, who has a filly who's won three in a row at three different tracks, all on turf, Plum Alley. Uh, Matt, who is your top pick in the juvenile fillies turf? Yeah, and this is a race. It's loaded with, uh, <clears throat> it's loaded with horses that are unbeaten uh, in here. And really, really tough, uh, tough call in this race again. I, I, I'm, you know, Campanelle stretching out. And, and I'll be honest with you, I, I'd rather see a horse on the, a young horse on the turf stretching out in distance than cutting back. Uh, because often, you know, they're they're prepping in the in these shorter races and are ready to go long. But I'm just wondering with these Wesley Ward horses, if uh, if he was just concerned about keeping them all clear and away from a horse we're going to talk about uh, in the next race. Anyway, I, I, I guess I ended up on a top choice, maybe. It's a little bit, I don't know if sentimental is the right word, but I'm hoping that this will be the year and maybe this will be the horse that finally gives Christophe Clement a Breeders' Cup victory. He's had a fantastic year, fantastic Saratoga meeting, fantastic Belmont spring and fall meetings, but he's over, I don't know, I think it's 39 in the Breeders' Cup. Therefore, I went with Plum Ali, hoping that this runner is going to get Clement his first Breeders' Cup winner. All right, Matt, make it six for six, because I'm also picking Plum Ali. And I, I also wavered on who would be my top pick in here. Uh, she's co-second choice, four to one on the morning line. Ant Pearl's a three to one favorite. On sheer impressiveness, I would have to say Ant Pearl's been the most impressive two-year-old turf filly in America uh, but I look at this field and I just see speed. I see a lot of speed, whether it be Campanella or a few others in here. And uh, I think that makes it a tough, tough job for Ann Pearl or Campanella, uh, for that matter. I, I think it's going to be tough because I think it's going to be a pretty fast and pressured pace. Plum Alley can come from off the pace. I love the fact that she, she went from Saratoga out to Kentucky Downs to Balma. She's cutting back a mile 16th to a mile, but that's that's a pretty minor cutback, especially when you consider the speed that I'm talking about. The reason I like her best is because of the pace scenario. I think she gets the trip. I think she can be the one finishing well. Four to one on the morning line, Matt. She's my top pick. And, and a couple others in here who I think could rally if, if I'm right and the pace is a little too fast for the horses out front. Madone coming from California. Miss Amulet coming from Europe. Both look like two horses who could close ground in this one mile Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf. Matt, we did it again. Six for six on our top picks. What are you, yeah. you going to do? What are you going to say for yourself? I, I, I don't have anything to say because mathematically and handicapping styles, uh, ours usually are, are different. Um, Almost, I can't believe this. I mean, I don't think that we could do this again with the same races and and have this happen again. But we got one more race, Brian. One more race. Before we get to that one more race, yeah. I will uh, remind people that I do have a suggested wager in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf. I'm going for the rallyer. I'm going for Christophe Clement. I like the fact that she's done it at three different turf courses. I like the fact that there's a lot of pace up in front of her. 20 to win. Plum Ali, I'm hoping she's the third choice in here because I know they'll like the Cox Philly and I think they'll like the Ward Philly. So Plum Ali rallies for the win. Better to win. All right, Matt, last race. And this one, we've got a pretty big favorite. I'm going to say this about the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. Uh, five and a half furlongs. Uh, it's, a, it's a newer race, but I think it's a very fun, interesting race. And uh, it seems like the best horse has won the last couple of years. Certainly on paper, you have to say Golden Pal is the best horse in here. 
well-bred, trained by Wesley Ward. But I want to say this, Matt. He drew the 14 hole, which is maybe this isn't the worst place. Uh, you, 14 hole in the, in, in the mile would be worse uh, with the configuration of the uh, first turn at Keeneland. But I don't love the 14 hole. And, and I think Wesley Ward could have bit himself in the butt because I think he might have had the second and third horses to beat in here in uh, Campanal and Royal Approval. And he sent both of those to stretch out to the mild juvenile Phillies turf. He's really saying Golden Palace the one, although he does have another horse in here as well. But uh, I wonder, I wonder about his choice in here, but Golden Palace the one to beat. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And, and I think I was alluding to it earlier with, uh, with Wesley Ward. You, you mentioned Campanelle and Royal Approval. There are a couple of fast, fast turf sprinters. And, and is it an indication from Wesley Ward that he just, that he thinks Golden Pal is that good that instead of sprinting those two, he's going to stretch them out and maybe they'll be fine there. Maybe they'll carry that speed. But um, I'm going to look at it this way. Yeah, 14 hole. Um, but this horse is fast. But he's going to have to get out of the gate smartly. Not not a quarter of a step slow or a half a step slow. Right out of the gate. Right to the lead. All the way around the track. Yeah, and I think he's got a great shot to do it. And to, and to your point, I think that's exactly what Wesley Ward is thinking. I think he thinks Golden Pal is a special juvenile turf sprinter, and I think he thinks this horse is going to win. So he's trying to he's trying to get a win in another race too with some of his good horses who have been sprinting. I think he's got a ton of confidence, Golden Pal. And if you watch the Skidmore, it's hard not to buy into that. He was so good up there at Saratoga in that race, just one for fun, geared down. A son of Lady Schiffman. Lady, now I'm confused. Is it yeah, Lady yeah. Schiffman? Lady <laughs> Schiffman. Yeah, they, they named him after me. Lady, let's call her Lady Schiffman. Of course, she was an awesome sprinting mare. And this is her son, Golden Pal. And the horse to beat is my top pick, Matt. Um, I'm not super excited about betting the race, but he's my top pick. Uh, the uh, the other horse I'm, I'm thinking about a little bit is Bo, Bodenheimer just because uh, he showed uh, a really good effort over the Keeneland turf course already. How about you? Yeah, and I, I also want to throw in, again, not a great post-position draw for the 13 for 2nd of July, uh, who was two for two and trained by Phil Gleaves, former assistant of the great uh, Woody Stevens. But this horse is a big closer. So, um, you know, uh, from way out there, at least at least he's a closer. Um, I've got a couple of wagers based on the juvenile turf sprint. I made these before the post position draw, so I, I, I did not change them. I'm going to stick with them. Um, I am going to do a $20 daily double using Golden Pal in the juvenile turf sprint. And that race is followed by the, uh, the juvenile turf. So I am going to use Golden Pal with Mutessa Beck. And battleground. I know, I know. Uh, it's it's chalky, but it's a twenty dollar ticket, and it's two big fields. So you know, even even if it only pays twenty dollars, that the, the, at with a twenty dollar ticket, you know, that's still uh, that's still a good payoff. And I'm also going to do and uh, a few ten dollar exactas in the turf sprint, straight up. Golden Pal on top. I'm looking for some closers to come running late in here, maybe at some decent odds with a $10 ticket. So it's going to be Golden Pal with 2nd of July for Phil Leaves, Lip is Honor, and Dirty Dangle. Maybe I just like the name of that horse. Dirty Dangle coming from Canada. Yeah, I think you I think you like that name. Now, Dirty Dangle's run a couple good races up uh, north of the border, so... A horse we don't know who, how good he is. Well, obviously, Matt likes Golden Pal a whole lot. Uh, folks, this has never happened for Matt and I before. It probably will never happen again, but we have the top pick. All seven of them are the same in these seven turf races. Magical in the turf, Ivar in the mile, Rushing Fall in the Philly and Mare turf, 
Linster in the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint, Mutasabek in the Juvenile Turf Sprint, Plum Ali in the Juvenile Phillies Turf, and of course, Golden Powell in the Juvenile Turf Sprint. Those are our top picks. You got our suggested wagers here. Obviously, we're going to do another show, which will be centered on what, Matt? Going to be centered on the dirt races for Friday and Saturday. It'll be structured just like uh, just like this show. Um, I don't know, Brian. I just think on the classic alone, there's no way we're going to be on the same horse in the even even in the classic. So I'm confident that we'll have more than seven picks for you uh, tomorrow. Knock on wood uh, with that. Uh, um, so. We got a lot of handicapping to do before Wednesday. Of course, I want to thank our producer, Brett Workman, for burning the midnight oil. And uh, uh, we're taping this show in the evening on Monday. So uh, enjoy it tomorrow on Tuesday. Yeah, and maybe Wednesday's show, Matt, will have seven different top picks. We can, we can only hope. Thanks to all of you for watching. We appreciate you. And all, all, all of you that are newer to Horse Center, Tuning in for the Breeders' Cup, we uh, we welcome you. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, please hit that little red button for us. We do appreciate it. Thanks to our partner, the best contest site out there, Derby Wars. Folks, we will be back in less than two days to talk about the seven dirt races, including the Classic, including the Distaff Showdown. Don't miss that as well right here on Horse Center. <laughs>